Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Diamond, AKA Lady Leo. And I'm super excited for today's video because I've always wanted to do an am I the asshole sort of reaction. I really enjoy watching them. I've just never actually done one myself. So I went in and I uh, just went through some am I the assholes. I just looked at the title. I did not read any of these ahead of time. So I don't know what they said. I wanted to start doing these um, with the wedding edition because I find those to be the most interesting. I am not married myself and as a present I'm not really interested in being married I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to the idea my sister's married my parents are married but I just find the wedding ones to be super interesting so I've got some am I the assholes and we're gonna read them then just decide whether or not the people in these posts are assholes these are completely random like I mentioned I just kind of went on the reddit website and just kind of skimmed through the titles found ones that I thought were interesting titles screenshotted those and we're just gonna do a few I think I screenshotted like six or seven and so we'll see how many I get through and like how long they are. All right, so the first one is from Pixie Dustwink, okay? <laughs> also, I don't usually wear my glasses when I'm filming because I use a ring light and you know, it does create a little bit of a glare, but because it's a little bit on the smaller side, like the screenshot, I do really need my glasses to read. So I am sorry, <laughs> I will need my glasses uh, to have them, but I have my screenshot right here and then I'll put it up somewhere on the screen so you guys can see it too. So this one is, am I the asshole for upstaging my sister's wedding announcement with my adoption news? Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> so I've been in the process of adopting a child for the past two years. It's been an emotional roller coaster, and only a handful of close family and friends know about it because I didn't want to jinx it until everything was final, which seems reasonable. Um, my older sister, let's call her Emma, got engaged around the same time I started the adoption process. Our family has been thrilled, planned for her big day next summer. Emma's always been the type to love attention, but I've been supportive and helped with preparations whenever I could. This past weekend, I received the final confirmation the adoption had gone through, and I was officially going to be a mom, but she's so excited. Overjoyed, I wanted to tell my family in person, so I thought our regular Sunday family dinner at our parents' house would be perfect. Well, as it turns out, Emma had a similar idea. She planned to announce her wedding venue and date at the same dinner without telling anyone. The dinner started and everyone was in good spirits. Before I could share my news, Emma stood up, clinked her glass for attention and beamed as she revealed her wedding plans. Our family burst into excited chatter and in that moment, I felt like my news could wait until later in the evening or even another day. But then my mom, who was the one of the few who knew about the adoption, gave me a knowing look and mouthed, now's the perfect time. Caught up in the emotion, encouraged by my mom's enthusiasm, I stood up and announced, and I have some news too, and I'm gonna be a mom. The adoption is final. So the room erupted, half the family rushed towards me, showering me with congratulations. But when I looked at Emma, her face had fallen. She excused herself from the table and didn't return for the last, sorry, for the rest of the evening. After the dinner, my parents and several relatives said that while they were happy for me, I should have waited and, and not have stolen Emma's thunder. Emma texted me saying I was an asshole for upstaging her on purpose and that I could have chosen another day to announce my news. I'm sorry, I haven't finished reading. Like, I only have one paragraph, but like, she's just announcing that she's getting married. Like, it's not like this was at the wedding or something. My intention was to wasn't to overshadow her announcement, and now I feel torn up about it. Emma and I haven't spoken since, and the family is divided on whether I was insensitive or, or whether it was just an unfortunate coincidence. So am I the asshole for sharing my adoption news on the same night as my sister's wedding venue announcement? <laughs> okay, first off, it's... Her sister, Emma, is only announcing her wedding venue. This is not an engagement party for Emma. And this isn't any, you know, this is just like a normal family dinner where she's announcing that she's getting married and it's going to be at this particular venue. Maybe I'm missing something, but I just genuinely don't understand why that would be a problem. Um, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, obviously Reddit says she's not the asshole because I guess that's what that notation means at the top. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think you were the asshole either. I mean, I personally don't think you were the asshole because 
she, you're not doing this at her wedding this isn't an engagement party this is literally just a family dinner and she was just announcing that she's getting married at a specific location so I don't understand how you having announcement of your own that you're you know that you're going to be adopting a child which is something you've been wanting for a while anyway upstages her so this is some ludicrousy on another level and I, this would never really happen in my family I only have one sister but I'm not I'm not jealous of my sister and vice versa and if I announced that I was adopting a child and my sister was like hey I'm gonna renew my vows with my husband yeah I'd be like oh great sis and she would probably say the same thing to me so I don't know I think there's some deeper context in the relationship that you have with your sister if like her response to you announcing something that has been really prominent for you that you've been wanting to do for a while that you know that her first response is oh you upstaged my announcement and there was no congratulations on her part I feel like that speaks more to the relationship that you have with her so I don't know I'd be curious to know what you guys' relationship was like before this if something like this could like uh, throw it into turmoil term turmoil <laughs> into turmoil and I disagree with your family too I don't really see what the problem was in announcing this here and if they think that there's a problem I don't know maybe they're like-minded uh in relation to your sister so I definitely don't think you're the asshole <clears throat> sorry I can't say asshole <laughs> definitely do not think you're the asshole pixie dust wink <laughs> moving on to the next one okay so this one is from ashley k with two y's three am i the asshole for telling my sister i was going to divorce sorry sis i said his sister sorry the last one was sister but she says telling my husband i was going to divorce him for going to his sister's wedding so this is happening in real time and i don't know if my emotions are super high right now or if i'm completely in the right my sister-in-law is getting married and i I think it's supposed to say have I have been helping her plan her wedding from the DJ to the makeup artist to the hair etc she asked me to be in the wedding party I agreed to that my husband agreed to have me read a prayer at the church even though I'm not very religious and to sponsor the wedding I was never asked for that I guess I don't I don't know what that means sponsor the wedding does that mean that you pay for a portion of it I don't know anyway um comes come comes comes to today comes to today does she mean come to today I, I, I don't know sorry we'll just say so today her first dress fitting I'm there with my mother-in-law my sister-in-law and my future in-laws everyone was looking at bridesmaid dresses and so was I I was then in the moment told I was not in the wedding party I was not allowed to be in the wedding photos and I would have to drive myself to the wedding due to my husband being in the groom's party I was told I was basically the wedding planner and would need to leave after the ceremony while the wedding party took photos to make sure the reception was being set up correctly. What? Okay, so she's in, this is her this is her sister's wedding. Sister-in-law? Did I This is her sister-in-law's wedding. Okay, sorry. So her sister in law wedding wanted her to plan it, I'm assuming for free, and then told her she's not actually in the wedding party. Uh, let me read the rest of it. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I stopped. <laughs> I walked away and texted my husband I was upset but didn't want to ruin his sister's big moment. She picked her dress and then continued to look at bridesmaid dresses. I told my sister-in-law I was leaving and congratulations on the dress. I made it outside and began to cry and called my husband and explained the situation to him. This isn't the first time his family has done this to me in the nine years we've been together. They disrespected me in my marriage so many times. I explained I no longer want to attend the wedding and he said okay but I still am and I told him if he wanted to that was fine but it would be the last time he allows his family to make me feel this way. He told me I'm being ridiculously ridiculous and my family agrees with him. <sighs> okay there's a lot going on there I would want to know you said she's done this to you before but like do you have some sort of contemptuous relationship with her like or have you just never gotten along with her maybe she doesn't like you for whatever reason um but if you don't really like her which it, she doesn't the, the original poster doesn't really say if that's the case but if you if I didn't like somebody I am not going to help them with something especially not something as labor intensive as like planning their wedding and did you assume you would be in the wedding party though because you were helping plan it 
Um, I, I mean, I suppose since you're, you know, married to her brother, maybe you would, but you came to the dress fitting and that's when they told you that you weren't going to be in anything. Uh... <laughs> I guess I'm more concerned with the fact that like your husband and your family agree with your husband that you're being ridiculous when you were helping her, like I said, presumably for free to plan her wedding. And she told you when she had the rest of the bridal party there to get dresses that you were a not going to be invited to the wedding, can't be included in any of the not sorry, not invited to the wedding, but like not allowed to be in the bridal party, not taking pictures. I I mean, sorry, I'm not trying to like shit on your marriage, but maybe you, sh you should reevaluate re your spouse too, because of his reaction to like your feelings on this is that you're being ridiculous and your family side with him. Maybe it's time to trash all of them. Maybe they're all trash and you should just go off and be on your own, sis. I don't know. I think there's more in here that OP may not be explaining, just like in terms of like the overall relationship between her husband's family and herself and maybe just like her own family but i personally don't think you were the asshole i would not really want to go to someone's wedding when they tell me that they want me to plan it for free i'm going to keep mentioning that because she didn't say anything about you know getting paid to help plan this person's wedding and wedding planners get paid so yeah i would be really upset if i wasn't even allowed to be in the 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 photos wasn't allowed to be part of the the bridal party and anything like that just to be told that it's like hey i want you to plan my wedding but like outside of that like i don't need anything else for you um yeah i don't think you're the asshole at all and i think your your husband's response is i i don't what do i know i'm not married but i'm just saying i'm just saying i don't think you're the asshole so that's just me moving on to the next one all right, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this one just a little bit so I can read it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, that's all I mean. Okay. So the next one comes from Kinky and Quirky. I kind of really like that name. <laughs> comes from Kinky and Quirky. I really like that name. Am I the ass for? Am I the asshole for calling off my forty thousand dollar wedding because my fiance dropped my cat off somewhere? Forty thousand dollars that's a lot of money for a wedding uh, to be fair objectively i wouldn't really know how much they cost because i'm i'm not <laughs> married but it seems like a lot of money to spend on what is really just one day but anyway i'm sorry so i 26 year old female have been with tom 30 year old male for seven years long time to be with someone we are no longer together and there were a lot of things that happened that made me break off the engagement one of which being my cat being chopped off without my permission so was I was out one morning getting a new trash can because we needed one for the new house. That morning, I had finally, after searching a few different stores, found one that I thought would fit nicely in the area we'd needed to go. I messaged Tom a couple of pictures and asked him to pick up, sorry, and asked him to pick from the lot of the ones that would fit. He responded with the number on the one he liked and sent, I dropped off your cat. Oh, sorry, he, sorry, he's, hang on a minute. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Um, okay, and then he dropped off, and then he, sorry, sent him, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, and then he sent a message that I dropped off your cat. I was immediately thinking about dropping him off at the vet, so I messaged back at the vet, is he okay, and he, and was met with no response until I called him. He said that my cat scratched his car, so I dropped him off at a park about five miles from the from the house i'm sorry, i'm not laughing but that had no houses around he did this with his best friend who was living with us at the time and trying to what wait what so he dropped off the cat at a random house with no houses around okay uh, that's so weird and then he immediately she says he did this with his best friends um, maybe he's, she means like the best friend was in the car with him the, who was living at them at the time and trying to get on his feet after leaving the military, having no giant lump, not, and not having any job lined up, which was of course put a strain on their relationship considering it was only supposed to be a couple of months. And this point was closer to eight. So uh, OP immediately started crying because this cat was her first cat. He also gave me this cat and knew I loved this cat. He was basically my child. This cat was put outside because he didn't like living with a dog 
and started using the bathroom outside of the litter box. And yes, we tried everything from calming cat pheromones to spray, to attraction litter, etc. Um, after none of those things works, we put him outside. Needless to say, my cat started to do what cats do, climb on things, mostly my car, but I didn't mind. Tom had mentioned he hoped my cat didn't start doing it with his car, but I told him if the cat did, we would figure something out on whether that was on whether that was a car cover or rehoming him if we had to. I don't agree with declawing a cat, especially an outside cat. Well, apparently my cat had done this once and Tom decided that he wouldn't tell me and take matters into his own hands if my cat did it again. <sighs> I don't have any pets, but this is, this is a pretty, uh, okay, I'm just gonna finish reading, but Tom said he walked outside that morning and saw a scratch on his car knew it was the cat and I asked him how he knew it was the cat he said he saw it on cameras I asked him to show me and he refused so I stayed there about a month going every morning morning and sitting in the spot where he dropped off my cat bringing clothes that he had worn the day before and setting them out there every day at 4 a.m. I talked to construction workers in the area left my phone number with people living closest to the park and even had friends and family come out to help me in the woods looking for my cat. I did everything with no help from Tom after I cried a solid month every morning about my cat. So after all seeing all this with no apology, I called off the wedding and left packing all my things within a week. I think about this scenario a lot and I always wondered, am I the asshole or do, I, do you think I did the right thing by leaving him? <sighs> okay. First, let me start by saying, I don't have any personal pets, but this is a pretty terrible thing to do, right? Like this is your cat. You've told him that your cat is really important to you and that you think of them as a child. And he took your cat and abandoned him in a random part of the city. Yeah, that's a pretty up thing to do. And um, yeah, I would call off the wedding too, because if that's you, what you can do with, you know, a living animal that you are deeply connected to, what would happen if you guys have children? Like, what would what would he do if your child does something that he wouldn't like? Obviously, I'm not saying that he would, you know, abandon your child somewhere else, but I'm just saying this shows a lot about his temperament in, 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 in the sense that his instinct is to be like, F my my partner i don't care that she loves this cat i'm just gonna abandon him in a random part of the town which is exactly what he did so yeah i would call off the wedding i'm sorry that it took you seven years to realize that he ain't shit but you know it now and at least you didn't get married and have kids with him because it would have been a lot more difficult to sort of uncouple your life when you got married um so no not at all he's trash and i'm really sorry that he did that to you and, and that you lost your cat hoping maybe that you find him this was a year oh, this is four months ago so maybe you found him or maybe you can find another cat that can bring you joy but yeah i'm really sorry that that happened to you we're gonna move on to the next one this might end up being a two-parter i don't know <laughs> i just kind of really like talking about these so might end up being a two-parter this next one comes from sorry i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger it's just easier for me it comes from kapippi it <laughs> sorry this next one comes from kapippi kapippi so it's k a and then the p i repeats p i p i p i three times kapippi <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know how to say your username but um so am i the asshole for telling my friend she's being unreasonable about my wedding oh we will see <laughs> So I, 32 year old male, oh, man writing in, okay, recently got engaged to my fiance, 30 year old female, and we've been ecstatic about planning our wedding, good for you. However, things took a turn when I shared our plans with my best friend, Sarah, who's a 29 year old female. Sarah and I have been friends since childhood, and she's always been an important part of my life. So naturally, I was excited to tell her about the wedding, but instead of being happy for me, Sarah started picking apart every detail of our plans. So first she criticized our choice of venue, saying it wasn't elegant enough for a wedding. And then she complained about the date we picked, claiming it was inconvenient for her because it fell on the same weekend as a trip she'd planned with her boyfriend. Uh, she even went as far as to criticize my dress choice, saying it didn't suit my figure. 
I tried to brush off her comments at first, thinking maybe she was just stressed or jealous, but when she continued to nitpick every aspect of our wedding, I couldn't stay silent any longer. So during a heated conversation, I told her that her behavior was hurtful, and then it felt like she was trying to make my special day all about her. Sarah didn't take my words well. She accused me of being selfish. How are you being selfish? And she said that my best friend, sorry, she said that as my best friend, she had the right to voice her opinions. The right? I mean, you can definitely voice them. I, I don't know about the right, but um, she even threatened to boycott the wedding if we didn't change things to her liking. <sighs> Now I'm left feeling torn. On one hand, I understand that weddings can be emotional and stressful and maybe Sarah was just caught up in the moment. But on the other hand, I can't shake off the feeling that her behavior was completely out of line. So am I the asshole for calling out my friend on her behavior or was I justified in standing up for myself and my wedding plans? You were justified. If this is her reaction to you just telling her that you're getting married and your plans, what do you think will happen when you get to the wedding, right? Like if she's this critical just about your ideas about what you want for your wedding, I don't think it would go down well on the actual day. And I wouldn't want someone so intensely negative uh, or having such a negative presence at my wedding. It's such an interesting thing that her reaction is to sort of criticize everything. I'd be curious to know, and I, I know it might come off as being a little bit cliche, but have you and her ever had a romantic you know situationship or have there ever been any romantic feelings on either side because this could be jealousy maybe that she's jealous that you're she that, that you're you and your partner are getting married when she's been in love with you for years i'm not saying that's the case i'm just asking if it's a possibility um but yeah it's not her wedding and if she doesn't like it she doesn't have to go that's exactly what i would tell her i don't want anybody at my wedding if i was getting married who wasn't there and happy for me i don't care if you don't like pink that's my colors pink and pink is for my wedding <laughs> if you don't like pink you know you can't be in the bridal party because every bitch would be wearing pink at my wedding you know what i mean like i i don't <laughs> I think it's one thing to voice your opinions as a friend, but there's a way to do it in a way that doesn't hurt people's feelings. And at the same time, if I was having a conversation with my best friend and I was being overly critical and she literally said to me, hey girl, I love you, but some of the stuff that you said to me was really hurtful, I would feel terrible that I made her feel like that, that she thought that any way that I was trying to sort of like bring her down and the fact that you told Sarah that and she said to you that you're being selfish that was her response to you telling her how you felt in a very direct way I don't know maybe you you might need to rethink your friendship with with Sarah I'm not saying you should cut her off immediately but I'm just saying Sometimes cutting people off is okay, especially if those people aren't serving you in your life. If they're not making your life better, why do you need them as friends? So I don't think you were the asshole and I think that her reaction may stem from some other feelings she has towards you that she's just not interested in saying, but I don't really see how any, any part of this is you being selfish. So definitely not the asshole. <laughs> now people are crazy about weddings. <laughs> That's kind of why I liked, that's kind of why I wanted to do like wedding is the first one because people get so intense about weddings and I've never really understood this because when my sister got married, I was, of course I was her maid of honor. The way that I thought about it is this is my sister's wedding. Anything she needs or wants, I'll do. But my sister's not crazy, so we didn't have any problems and it went off without a hitch and my, my sister had a very beautiful wedding and that was like seven years ago. But that's kind of my thought process. Like if somebody is asking me to be in their bridal party or if I was close enough to be, to be their maid of honor, I just wanna make sure their wedding goes off without a hitch. If there's anything that I think, you know, that I have an opinion on, I'll voice it, but they don't have to listen to my opinion. It's their wedding. They're free to do whatever they want, but I don't know why people get so intense about weddings. I don't know. It's just very interesting to me. I find it incredibly fascinating. All right, we're moving on to the next one. So this one is going to be a two-parter because it's a little bit on the long side. It's, sorry, it's a two-part in, in, in the sense that there'd be two separate screenshots. So this one comes from Ambitious Comfort 6686. <laughs> 
so does that mean that somebody else has the name ambitious comfort that you had to put the numbers after there i'm just saying it doesn't seem like it's a popular screen name but i could be wrong um am i the asshole for not agreeing to foot the bill to get my dad to my niece my niece's wedding so last fall my niece 31 announced her engagement and i 44 female was thrilled for her in early spring she announced the date and the location of the wedding she chose to get married where she currently lives which is several states away from all of her family knowing this would be a costly trip for my husband and me I started looking at travel arrangements right away. The drive to her wedding was about 14 hours and my husband didn't have much vacation time available so we decided to look into flying down. I text my niece to see what the closest airport was and she immediately called me. She said she had good news and bad news about the wedding. The good news was I didn't have to get her a gift and the bad news was I was responsible for getting my dad to the wedding. Uh, okay, um, uh, let me just finish reading before we unpack that. Uh, she stated that I needed to get him there, get him hotel rooms, give him new clothes, a haircut, and tell him he sm and tell and tell him he smells and needs a bath. My dad has several health problems, lives off of social security, and not a is not able to help financially at all. Initially, I agreed and started looking into logistics that night. Hang on a minute. You agreed? Is this the way she told you? Like she just said, it's your job to get your dad to the wedding and to pay for it all? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, get, I'm getting ahead of myself, but like the way that you wrote it sounds very sort, sort of demanding. And um, I would be like, what do you mean my job? And what do you mean I'm paying for all of it? But I digress, let me just pick up wherever I left off. Um, she said the dad has several health problems lives off social security not able to help financially initially i agreed and started looking into logistics that night with my dad's health issues the 14-hour drive was not an option and we would have to fly down flights range from 600 to 800 dollars each we would need a rental car as my niece stated she couldn't pick us up from the airport but after that we were on our own hotel rooms for at least three nights plus the cost of food and the list of my niece's demands i quickly realized this was not something i could afford the next day i called my niece and told her i would be happy to get him there but i couldn't financially i couldn't be responsibly i couldn't be financially responsible for it she got very angry at me and asked why we had to fly when we could just stick him in the car and drive down okay I wouldn't be making any concessions for her because she doesn't really seem like she's a nice person. She's not willing to help you with anything, but she wants him there. This is your niece, so it's your father. So this is her grand. This is her grandfather. I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, uh, so you remind. Sorry, I reminded her of, of his health issues and that the 14-hour drive would result in needing additional hotel rooms because he's not able to sit in a car for 14 straight hours. She insisted I was wrong and the whole thing would only cost me $150 because I should just stuff him in the car and drive straight through. <laughs> I didn't I didn't need hotel rooms for him because my my husband and I should share our room with him. <sighs> The health issues he has resulted in major digestion issues, so sharing a small room with one bathroom was not something I was willing to do. The call ended with my niece saying she would look into flights and I thought everything was good. I waited several days and then messaged her to check in on plans. She never responded. I messaged a few more times and still no response, so I reached out to my sister. My sister confirmed that not only was my niece mad at me, the whole family was, and proceeded to list each family member that was upset with me, and my niece was so upset that she was considering not inviting me to the wedding? What is happening? <laughs> what is going on this was devastating to me she said my niece had given everyone tasks to help out with the wedding and this was mine i asked repeatedly why i was expected to be financially responsible and was never given an answer i will admit that i'm not 100 percent in the right here girl how this is sorry i'm not sure if you're you're yeah you said you're a female but how are you not in the right here your niece demands that you bring your father to her wedding that you pay for it all and or find some way to do it 
I, at first I thought maybe you're an only child, but you have a sister and maybe you have other relatives. No one else is offering to help you with this and this is all upon you for some reason. How are you in any, in the wrong, in it, I, I'm, mm, I'm short circuiting. Let me just finish reading. <laughs> When my sister listed the family members mad at me for not being willing to foot the bill for his travel, I became enraged and my reaction was really poor. Is that what she means by not being in the right? And I mean poor, when I'm, and when I mean poor, I mean I went for the jugular. I even, going to the next screenshot, I even called my niece a word that I can't say that starts with a C, <laughs> which I apologize for the next day better than me I wouldn't have apologized my sister finally agreed to share her room with him and pay for the new clothes and haircut and asked if we would drive him down again expecting me to stuff him in the car and drive straight through at this point I felt like the only reason I was being invited was to get my dad there and I was not wanted at the wedding so I told her I was no longer planning on attending the wedding I spoke with my dad the weekend prior to the wedding the plan was for him to drive down with my sister the night before they planned to leave my dad decided he was not going to the wedding his reason he can't sit in a car that long with his health issues the wedding has now passed and my sister has taken every opportunity to disparage me to anyone that will listen while I have never spoke about it to anyone aside from my husband best friend and my therapist the way I see it she's not my daughter okay so niece so it's your sister's daughter okay um and it wasn't my wedding so I wasn't financially responsibility I think she means financially responsible um side note while all this was going on my husband and I have been saving for and was in the process of buying our first home so money was tight we regularly help him out monthly and make bills and my husband never complains and is happy we are able to help him out be but taking the possibility of our dream home from us what were you the asshole no um no not at all your sister it's your sister's father as much as it is yours so i'm not really sure why your niece sort of put it upon you that it's your responsibility to find a way to get your father down there pay for it your father has a lot of health issues so they know this and i don't i i wouldn't want to go to that wedding either and you know you called her what she was being and i'd be curious to know like outside of going to her wedding before this did you actually have a relationship with your niece or was it one of those things where like she's getting married and she wants you to go because something that i i say to people all the time and some people feel some type of way about it most of my family outside of like my immediate family members we are family but we're not friends that doesn't mean that i don't love them but i'm just saying that we do not talk to each other outside of like seeing each other for holidays or special events we're not friends we're family my immediate family you know i am close to them we do talk and i see them quite often but i would just be curious to know like did you have a relationship with your niece ahead of this or was it just she wanted you to come to the wedding and then she just wanted you to find a way to get her grandfather your father there yeah i don't think you're the asshole at all i think your sister and her daughter are incredibly unreasonable and you know your dad couldn't even do it because he couldn't be in the car for 14 hours and you couldn't afford it because the world doesn't stop when one person gets married you know and i don't know i don't understand why people have this sort of delusion that their wedding it, it stops the world turning if it doesn't happen it's just one day okay i mean calm the f down <laughs> So not the asshole at all. I'm I'm assuming that you don't have much of a relationship with either one of these people. I probably wouldn't unless they acknowledged how ridiculous they were being. And if they're not willing to acknowledge that, I wouldn't be interested in having a relationship with either one of them. Never too late to cut someone off. All right, we're moving on to the next one. All right, next one is setting equivalent 663 again is, is does somebody else have the name setting equivalent that you need to add the 663 just genuinely curious that's all am i the asshole for not moving my wedding up to accommodate one person admittedly i haven't started reading yet but my my <laughs> my my instinct is no <laughs> okay well let me read my fiance 34 male we'll call him andrew and i 32 year old female are getting married in july of this year which we are both really excited for Sorry, Bitfinder, I'm working. We ended up choosing Sunday during 
sorry we ended up choosing sunday due to various reasons that ended up working for us however this caused some family drama while the majority of our invited family and guests don't have a problem with sunday at the wedding date my future sister-in-law will call her anna and her husband have declined to come Anna has stated that while they would very much like to come, their religious beliefs are stronger than their will to attend, and they absolutely will not miss church for our wedding. Whew, that's some that's some serious conviction. Um, I was very nice and told Anna that was fine. You you all do you, and uh, we'll miss you if you have other obligations that are preventing you from coming. I understand. Andrew, on the other hand, that's her fiance, was furious for good reason. This is his baby sister, and he understandably feels betrayed. So here's the kicker. Andrew and I decided that 5 p.m. would be the perfect time for our ceremony. Anna and my now mother-in-law are trying to convince us to move up the time so she and her husband could potentially in attend. So, so they decided on Sunday at five o'clock. Okay, We got our venue from 10 to 10 and we're doing everything ourselves, decorations, tables, flowers, catering, etc., including getting ourselves ready. One second while I sip some water. If we move our time up, we obviously would have less time to do all of this. Plus my anxiety, stop with the notifications plus my anxiety wouldn't be able to enjoy one of the biggest days of my life if i'm rushing around trying to make everything perfect in less time gosh i'm sorry there's so many updates that are going on on my laptop it's so annoying <laughs> um plus my anxiety wouldn't okay sorry i read that of course of course andrew and i want his sister and her husband to be there but we aren't going to bend over backwards trying to make them happy this is our day not anyone else's this is true it's your wedding um also if not even a guarantee sorry, sorry it's not even a guarantee that they'll come in the first place andrew and i have talked it over and we are firm in the fact that this is all her decision we are not forcing her to miss church nor are we going to change our entire plans for someone who may or may not attend they can either come to the wedding or on sunday at five and miss church or they can go to church or miss our wedding after talking to my future mother-in-law it has come to my attention that anna thinks now thinks that i hate her and I'm making all this harder for her because she really wants to be there, but we won't move on the time. I think my mother-in-law is trying to keep the peace, but we are staying firm on our time. Are you the asshole? No. First off, let me just start by saying I'm not a religious person at all. I have been to church many times though, um, because some of my other family members are religious and my mom grew up sort of, well, both my parents did, but they, they, they adopted a different approach for my sister and I. So I definitely have gone to church. There's nothing wrong with it. I've never gone to church on a Sunday in the evening. Um, most of the time when I did go to church, it was definitely on the morning. So I'm, I'm curious to know why she has to go to church. One second. Yeah, sorry. So I'm curious to kind of know, like, why do you have to go to church on Sunday in the evening? Because they're, I'm guessing the reception itself is not until five, right? Sorry, let me read it where she, she said it was at five. So they have the venue from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So they're doing everything themselves. So I'm guessing it's just the reception that's at five. She didn't really clarify, especially if you have the venue for like 12 hours. I'm assuming the ceremony is sometime earlier in the day and the reception's at five, or maybe the actual venue houses everything like the space where they get ready. I don't know. My point is if the wedding itself is at five, who goes to church at five on Sundays? Is that, is that a thing? As somebody who's not religious, who hasn't gone to church in years, I genuinely don't know. I'm just like asking a question for the floor. But yeah, do people go to church at five on Sunday? Is that a, a thing? Even so, I personally don't think you're the asshole. It's your wedding. And you would be talking about making a concession for one person who's probably known for a long time that this is going to be when your reception is. And I'm a firm believer that people make time for the things that they want to. And if your sister-in-law wanted to be there, she would. She doesn't because she's not willing to make any changes to do that. Sometimes when it comes to weddings, you often have to do things that you may not necessarily like. Maybe you gotta be somewhere on a Saturday. A lot of weddings takes place on the weekend. Um, and even though it's a wedding, you know, you are giving up your Saturday to be at someone else's wedding. So you're making a sacrifice. But if it's something that's important to you, you'll do it, you know? So I, <laughs> I, I don't really like this whole, like your sister 
Anna can't have a conversation with you right because she's talking to your mother through you but I feel like if you have something to say to me say it to my face like if you 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 think that I hate you I'm not saying that I hate you but I'm also not going to make a, a change to my wedding to accommodate you because you're not willing to make a change to your schedule you're not willing to not go to church one day or one time for my wedding so I feel like I personally do not think that OP is the asshole and I wouldn't change my wedding date either. You don't wanna come, don't come. I'm not gonna go out of my way to, to make it easier for you. This is my wedding. Come if you want, come if you don't, I don't know. That's my two cents. All right, moving on to the next one. <laughs> so we've got, this is from Kagaludu, Kagoludu, Kag, Kagoludu 13. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't want to attend my father's wedding. Am I the asshole? It depends on the situation. Let's read. Hello, everybody. I need some advice for what I'm about to do. My parents got divorced about 10 years ago when I was 18 because my mother found out that he had been cheating on her for the past two years. Okay. After that, I kept on seeing my father, but I didn't want to meet his new partner. And for that, he would punish me by being mean, by criticizing me for everything I did, etc. Two years ago, I decided to accept her, the same person who we cheated on my mother with. You better than me, because I'm, I'm gonna accept her. And our relationship got better, but recently he asked me to attend to his wedding, to sorry, to attend his wedding, and even being his witness, which I refused. And I accepted, you said you refused, maybe you refused initially. And then I accepted because I uh, didn't want to create conflict after all the years feeling bad and guilty. The more the date and the wedding got close, the more anxious I got, and I'm thinking about eventually not going. I know he will hate me for that. Do you think this decision is selfish? Should I make an effort and go? Thanks for the responses. Sorry for your uh, approximate English. Got it. Um, I see where you're coming from, and I personally probably would not be interested in going to the wedding with my father and the woman he cheated on my mother with regardless of the relationship that you have with your mom and it seems like you probably have a lot of respect for your mom which is why you know you're so angry with your dad for that i also think the way your dad treated you by not accepting his new partner speaks volumes about his manners um it almost seems like his relationship with you is sort of conditional right it's like okay I'm not gonna, you know, accept you as my child, love you as my child, unless you accept the choices that I've made. So I think there's a lot of deeper seated issues going on there because he cheated on your mother and in, is marrying that woman he cheated on your mother with. I don't think you would be wrong if you did not want to go to the wedding. I would say in all fairness to your father and his future bride, it would be appropriate to sort of tell them that ahead of time and not do something where you just genuinely don't show up. So I think if you're feeling this, you probably were pressured into wanting to be, you know, his witness and be there. You probably wanted to be there just, you know, in good faith because you want to keep a good relationship with your father. But maybe now um, you're at a point where you're just like, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't forgive you and I'm not accepting this. And I think if that's how you feel, there's nothing wrong with that. Like that's a valid feeling. I just think it is important to actually have that conversation with him. And I'm genuinely curious, like, have you ever sat down and told him how you feel about the whole situation? How terrible it is that he betrayed your mother like that and, and that he ended up marrying this woman. So I, I wouldn't really want to go to that wedding. And I don't even know if I would want to maintain a relationship with my father if he could treat my mother like that and also just like punish me because I wasn't willing to accept the choice that he made. So I do not think you're the asshole for not wanting to go to the wedding. I think it's really important just to kind of talk to your dad and tell him, hey, I don't really want to go to the wedding and it's because of X, Y, and Z. Just make sure you tell him that like ahead of time and it's not a situation where like you just don't show up. So that's my two cents. All right, I got to change my battery. So this one comes from Funking Frogger. I actually really like that username. <laughs> Am I the asshole for distancing myself after my best friend didn't put me in her wedding? Oh, this one's probably gonna be, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. It always gets a little tricky when it comes to best friends and not being in someone's wedding. 
So I, 31 year old female, have this best friend who's the same age who has abruptly become my ex best friend. A little bit of background. We met in college, we've been best friends ever since. We were roommates for a couple of years and we were inseparable. There was a third friend, 33 year old male in our circle who was also a best friend, but over time, he and I grew apart due to him completely fabricating his life and lying constantly. Um, that needs to be whole other, oh, sorry, that's a whole other Reddit post. Um, she is still best friends with the lying friend and they seem to be closer than ever. Interesting choice for her. Um, we all live a few hours apart, but made time for each other frequently with me being the one to travel to her city about once a month to spend a whole weekend. That's some commitment right there. You're a good friend traveling to someone else's city once a month to spend a whole weekend. That's a lot of time money. I imagine, um, this went on for years. I often wondered and worried about how this would go when we would be in our thirties, forties, and they started having kids, uh, you don't want kids. Shush. I don't want kids. Sorry, I got to stop going in and out of different uh, present and past tenses. Um, sorry, I got to stop going in different first and third person tenses. But I just kept going and I just kept going up and visiting her as much as possible. Since I met her, she has only come to visit me in my town approximately five times. <sighs> I can see where this is going. When she got engaged, we were all ecstatic. They planned their destination wedding. People with destination weddings, man, that shit is expensive. Anyway, we all booked flights and hotels to see her get married. My boyfriend isn't a huge fan of weddings and I wanted to sweeten the deal for him. So we planned an excursion for a few days to a huge destination, a few hours from the wedding. We had an amazing time. It's hard for me to see other people get married because I want that too, but we are, we just aren't doing that right now and I'm okay with it. But sometimes it's just hard. My dad is sick and I wanted him to walk, to, I wanted him to walk down the aisle, but that will not likely happen in his lifetime. So my partner there with me at the wedding was really important and making the memories of the huge destination uh, made it all worth it. Months before the wedding, she told me she was only having, uh, sorry, this, I think this is a two part one. I forgot to mention that. I just, I noticed that. Months before the wedding, she told me she was only having family in the wedding party. Why is she telling you this like before the wedding and not like, like initially but anyway i was completely okay with this she has sisters and so does her husband so it makes complete sense then a week or so after she told me lying friend would be the best man because her husband doesn't have any other best friends and i was devastated um, she was planning to have her other best friend in her wedding but not me i cried oh my gosh i'm so sorry for you girly I never said anything to her, but I was heartbroken for a while. Months later, she told me he would not be in the wedding, but still I sat with that on my chest for that time and it hurt me. Going to the next screenshot. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize there was so much on this second part. <laughs> in the past, she has put stipulations on not allowing any of my other friends to hang out when we are hanging out. <sighs> she sounds exhausted, if I'm being honest, girly. She wants me to, to herself, sorry, she wants me all to herself, it seems. So not knowing what else to do, I just went with my own flow and started doing my own thing. Then after the lying, then after lying with the one friend starting to get out of hand, I put the stipulation on her. I didn't want to hang out with him all the time and asked that she make time for just me and sometimes he can join. She completely ignored it and continued to invite him to everything we were doing together. Lots of, lots of red flags. Fast forward to a month ago. This summer has been jam packed for me. I've been living my best life, going to music festivals, weddings, spending time with my, sorry, concerts, spending time with my family. She and I made plans to go on a lake day to finally see each other since the spring. If you noticed, I stopped going to her house on a monthly basis. Good on you because she doesn't seem like the type of person who reciprocates. And um, that's a lot of effort, time, energy, and money that you put into her that she is not giving you back. So I would have stopped going to her house monthly a long time ago, but I'm glad that you got there. Um, she planned on bringing our lying friend and insisted that we adhere to his schedule. I was fine with it because I just wanted a nice like lake day with my friends and to chill. The week before the lake day, I texted and asked what the plan was, times, who's bringing what, etc. She told me I should come up Saturday. We had already planned on Sunday and I wasn't free Saturday to come up and swim at the pool with them. Instead, 
I told her I couldn't, I had plans. Then a week later, she invited me to a cookout. I explained that I had plans already and couldn't make it. When I say she flipped out on me, I'm not exaggerating one bit. She told me I never prioritize her. <sighs> oh my God, this chick is making me mad and I don't even know her. <laughs> All of her family, her husband, and the lying friend see that I have not been there for her as much anymore. I was stunned. She told me I make her feel like she's boring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I told her I'm not in control of her feelings. To this, she flipped out even more. She told me how dare I say that her feelings are not valid. Is that what you said? You said you weren't in control of her feelings. That's not what you said. I absolutely did not say this and reminded her of that fact. She told me it was unacceptable that I went and did the huge destination portion of my trip the week leading up to her wedding, which she's just now mentioning. Uh, okay. She wanted me to be there at her wedding for an entire week before the ceremony. I was just a guest and felt like she made sure I knew it. Wouldn't be doing, sorry, wouldn't doing all of that I can't read. Wouldn't doing all that be an exception for a wedding party member, not a guest? We have barely so spoken since this blow up. I write her a huge text message telling her how I felt and I didn't want to cause stress drama at her wedding. So that's why I never said anything, but I made sure to lay everything out for her in the text. She responded with a very corporate, I hope in the future we can see eye to eye on this and then silence for a month. She then reached out and asked if we can FaceTime or meet for lunch. I told her I'm not ready. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. I don't think I'm the asshole here and I've cut off and I've cut off her best friends for much less than this and I've and I've cut off from I'm oh, sorry I think she meant she's cut off friends for less than this it says TLDR I don't know what that means my best friend didn't put me in her wedding I, we was going to put another best friend in the wedding but changed her mind I was upset but didn't say anything until she flipped out on me for not making her making time for her I am I the only one I am, I am also the only one to travel to visit her in the past 10 years. <sighs> I would say to you that, first off, I don't think you're the asshole at all. I think the relationship that you have with her is not good for you. And it took you a long time to realize it, but it's one of those situations where you're doing, you're going the 90% and she's just doing the 10 and the, the rare times where you're not going the 10%, she's just like, how dare you not be a good friend to me? You don't make time for me. You're not dropping everything you need. You're not dro dropping your entire life for me. This is a toxic friendship. And I know it hurts to cut people off. It does really hurt to cut people out of your life. But if those people are toxic to you, I mean, to me, it doesn't really hurt. I would cut her out. I mean, what, what does she do for you as a friend? Like what, what does having her in your life do for you? Just, just to clarify, my best friend and I, I've known her since I was like 15, 16. We didn't go to the same high school, but we kind of met in that age at a job and we would never have this type of dynamic. Um, there was like a few years where we didn't talk and it wasn't because we were mad at each other. We were just like sort of off doing our own things, living our own lives and we lost touch. And we ended up recoupling a few years ago and we made a really conscious choice, both of our parts to stay in each other's lives. So we, we text every couple of months. We don't talk to each other all the time, even though we live in the same state, but you know, she's married with kids and I got my own life, but we see each other maybe a couple times a year and we have a really good relationship. I don't feel that from here. I feel like your relationship with Toxic, she makes it clear that she still wants to include that person that you don't want to have any sort of relationship with. She wants to include them every time you guys hang out. She doesn't make any effort to see you, to talk to you. She didn't put you in the wedding. It wasn't even a first thought when a situation came up where you could be put in the wedding. And I know that it hurt. I know that it hurt to to hear that from her and to feel that, but I think you needed it. I think you needed to know that that's the type of person that she is. And if it was me, I would I would call her, or maybe you can send her a text, whatever, you know, whatever your dynamic is, and just tell her, this is not, we're not gonna be friends anymore. You're not good for me or however you wanna word it, but I just don't think that our friendship serves my life. You know, it doesn't make my life any better. 
and I'm just really tired of like exhausting myself to be your friend because she sounds exhausting and uh, I'm exhausted and mad <laughs> reading this not because of you be because of her dynamic and your dynamic with her I've never had a friend like this but I've definitely had situations where you know you got to cut people off if you have to you have to and um I don't think there's anything wrong with that I think it's worse to keep someone in your life who's just you know not good for you and as soon as I read that you make you were making a trip to see her monthly that is a lot of time on your part right and I don't know what your situation is in terms of like work but I know you said you you have a boyfriend but you know I'm single I don't have any kids I've been single for a long time and my bestie lives she lives like maybe 45 minutes away from me I'm gonna be honest with you I'm not going to see her every month and she wouldn't do the same for me either that's a lot and we live pretty close but you were making a trip to go see her once a month and you would stay for her you would stay with her for the entire weekend that's a huge investment in time and I'm not saying that you can't see and hang out with your friends but like as time goes on your ability to see them all the time it changes and whether or not somebody is a true friend is really dependent on like the situation right like if I really needed my bestie I could call her up and we could talk or I could go over there but we have a really good dynamic because we're, we're, we're kind of like low maintenance friends we talk to each other a couple times a month via text we talk about what's going on in life we see each other when we can and we have a really good relationship in that regard because we're both very independent and we're both very busy but you know i'm not going to see her once a month <laughs> the effort on your part to me is just mind-boggling I, I clearly i can't stop talking about it but yeah i would um i would just yeah, girly, I'm sorry, but I would, <laughs> would would not be making the effort anymore. And I think you're valid in all of your feelings. And I'm really sorry that that you went through that. And I'm, I'm sorry that it took you this long to realize that she's not a good friend, but she's not. She's not a good friend. She's not a good person. And I personally wouldn't want her in my life. So I think it's time to cut her off if you want to. It's what I would do, but you know, live your best life. You don't have to do what I do because I do it. But yeah, it's definitely what I would do. So this was my first time doing Am I the Asshole? But I actually really had a fun time doing this. I really like reading them and just sort of processing my thoughts about the situation from the limited information in the moment. So I, I definitely will continue to do Am I the Assholes going forward. I don't think I will exclusively stick to wedding, but I do think the wedding category is pretty fun. So <laughs> um, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you thought of some of these or if you have any suggestions or any Am I the Asshole threads on Reddit. I'm new to the Reddit, so I don't I don't know all the stuff, the lingo. But anyway, but like, let me know if there's anything in the comments below you think I should react to. Well, that has been my time. I thank you so much and I catch you later. Bye.